Welcome to part 9 of the video series, and it's been a long winter in Canada, so we didn't get an awful lot done through the winter. But I've been working on it since the past few weeks, and um, let me just show you what I've done. Uh, I fitted this 4 point roll cage in the car, and um, it, there's a regulation that you have to have a roll cage. Last year we didn't find time to finish it, so we just went without a roll cage and we got away with it, but this year we've uh, completed the roll cage. And uh, the other thing is, I got rid of the welded differential and got an LSD installed. Um, I didn't do that myself, I just drove into a shop. And let me just go ahead and show you how I made the roll cage. Now for making the roll cage, I started off with a, a main hoop that was already bent. Uh, so the good thing was I didn't have to do any bending, it was just a matter of um, adjusting the size of the main hoop and then cutting and welding all the additional supports that go onto it for making the roll cage. So the first thing I did was I cut my main hoop from the center and I had to do that because I had to make it a little wider. I think this was for a smaller car originally so it was a little too narrow for my car. And uh, the way I widened it was I first cut it and then I overlapped it with a larger tube from the center and uh, welded that uh, larger tube on. But uh, the fit was so tight that I had to first clean the burrs off that the chop saw causes. And after that I was able to slide the larger tube onto this one. It was still a pretty tight fit, but it worked. So now the next step was to test fit the um, main hoop in the car and this is just to make sure uh, where it goes and how wide it actually needs to be when it's inside the car. Uh, so first I fitted it to where I wanted the main hoop to go and then I took some measurements of exactly how wide the main hoop was when it was inside the car and um, then I marked up all the places where the additional supporting tubes needed to go like the tube that goes horizontally across the main hoop where the seats would mount. And after this I just took the main hoop out and completed the belts. So after this the next step was to make the tube that horizontally goes across the main hoop where the seats will mount. And now the problem is when you're welding, when you're attaching a round tube to a round tube you need to notch the end of one round tube so it fits onto the other tube perfectly and you're not left with big welding gaps. And um, the proper way to do it is to use a tube notcher. Uh, but I don't have a tube notcher, so what I usually do is I use a chop saw and I cut two angles at the end of the tube just to make like a, make a notch shape at the end of one tube. And this, if you get the angles right, this works out pretty well and one tube just fits onto the other tube pretty much perfectly and you're not, and you don't end up with any welding gaps at all. Um, so here I cut the first angle, then I just moved it to the second angle. And um, the, way I the way I do this is that I just mark uh, the angles with a marker on the tube and then I try to replicate those um, with the chop saw. And here's what the tube looks like at the end. Um, it takes a bit of practice to get this right, but once you do get it right, you end up with the, the other tube. It just pretty much fits perfectly onto the tube and you're not left with any welding gaps. If you don't get it right the first time, you can always angle grind the end of one tube to make it just to make the size perfect so it does go onto the other two better. Um, so after this I just um, uh, tack welded that uh, part onto the um, main hoop and then I completed the weld. Now this is just a flux core welder so don't expect TIG welding quality from this or anything but uh, it still works out fine. Uh, so the step after this was uh, making the diagonal tube that goes across the main hoop and this prevents lateral distortion of the main hoop in case your car actually does roll over. Um, and for making this I had to make it in two sections and the problem was that the angle I had to notch these tubes on uh, turned out to be pretty sharp um, because uh, the tube was actually it was sharper than a 45 degree angle. So my chop saw didn't go to those sharp angles. So I just had to freehand uh, cut that with an angle grinder. And that was a pretty difficult thing to do. But it still works out fine. And here's what the tube looked like at the end. That's a pretty sharp angle. But it did fit onto the other tube pretty much perfectly, so that was good. And um, I had to make this tube in two pieces because now the other tube is in the middle. Uh, the tube that's going horizontally across. But once I was done with that, I just tack welded this. And the good thing about tack welding everything first before you complete the welds is if you make a mistake you can just hit it with the hammer a few times and the tacks break off 
and you can still make an adjustment like this time I got it wrong it wasn't perfectly on the mark so I could still move the tube either way by a few millimeters or centimeters and then I tack welded it again and after tacking it I just um, completed the welds um, so after this I made the final thing that was gonna be well not the final thing there's also other supports that need to be welded on but for now it was the final thing that I uh, connected to the roll cage and this was the brisk for where the seats will mount um, originally I was planning just to mount the seats straight to the roll cage on the horizontal bar but the thing is if I did that changing your, the seat position would have been a real hassle the whole roll cage would have had to move forwards or backwards so I decided to mount this extra brace to the roll cage just to weld it on uh, so in case later on someone does need to change the seat position it is still possible uh, so I tack welded it in for now and um, later I test fitted it in the car just to make sure everything lines up perfectly um, so then I can take it out again and weld it for the final time uh, so of course now I had to um, do the difficult job of putting the roll cage in um, this was pretty heavy at this point it weighed around 20 kilograms so for one person to lift it and put it in the car it was a little tricky and the other tricky part was there's wiring harnesses going on both sides of the car and I had to be careful not to damage those and they also had to be moved aside so um, because the roll kit goes exactly where the wiring harnesses are passing right now uh, so they had to be moved to either side of the roll kit just to make it fit in the middle uh, but the good thing was all the sizes and everything did work out fine so I had to take it out again for one final time and complete the welds that I didn't complete before and once these welds were complete I just um, wiped the whole thing down with alcohol just to clean any grease or dirt on the roll cage and then I gave it a paint um, and I just used a spray paint to paint it this is just so that the roll cage doesn't rust because if you leave steel exposed it's gonna get rusted pretty quickly and now I got to my least favorite part of the whole thing and that's welding inside the car and I really hate this job because it's messy, sparks go all over the place in your car and it really makes a mess. Um, I just used some steel sheets and some cardboard just to cover off any um, plastic or carpets in the car so nothing um, gets damaged because of all these sparks flying around. And these welds were also super difficult to do because the floor panel in the car is made of really thin metal. And um, at first when I tried to, tried to do it I kept burning through the floor because the roll cage is really thick metal and also the... Uh, steel sheets that go at the bottom of the roll cage were pretty thick uh, so welding those to the floor was a difficult job but I also welded it to the side uh, frame of the car which was made of much thicker metal and those welds turned out to be a little easier and I guess that will give the roll cage more strength to uh, welding it to the side not just to the floor um, but yeah this was a pretty difficult weld and uh, one important thing is to remove the plastic panels under the floor uh, before you do this. I didn't do that and I thought it wouldn't be a problem but I learned it the hard way. Uh, one of the panels underneath the car did catch fire later and um, luckily I had water close by. I just threw some water on it and um, it is important to take those panels off because um, they can catch fire. Now the last part of the roll cage was um, welding these two rear braces and um, yeah, I just cut them to size the same way, just notched the tubes and um, placed it at the right part at the back. And then I just grabbed my um, MIG welder and tacked it. And um, I was doing this inside the car and it was pretty close to the roof liner. So I put this aluminum uh, sheet between the roof liner and the roll cage just so that the roof liner doesn't catch fire. And I put some cardboard on over the wiring harnesses so none of that would get damaged because of the sparks. Uh, this was still a pretty difficult place to weld, uh, but still easier than the place at the bottom. That was even more difficult. Um, or originally I was planning to take these rear braces all the way back to the strut towers uh, on the rear suspension. But um, for that, that would have been a little more difficult. I would have had to uh, make holes in uh, that panel at the back where the rear seats mount and then take it all the way back. But um, this was also a pretty strong part of the chassis where I was connecting these and um, it was much closer to here and it was a much easier job welding over here. So I just decided to attach the rear braces 
on this part of the chassis rather than taking them all the way back to the strut topper. So that was it for the roll cage. Now the other change I made on the car was um, I got rid of the LSD and um, oh, got rid of the welded diff and got the LSD installed. And uh, this is the uh, welded diff that came out. Uh, I didn't replace it myself, I just drove it into a shop because um, the last time I took the differential out uh, for welding it, it was a pretty difficult job and I just didn't feel like doing it again. Uh, so there's not an awful lot to show you guys because the shop just did the work. Um, but yeah, uh, the welded diff, it did work fine and um, after the track none of the welds broke or anything, so that was good. But um, the it was just a horrible thing driving on a welded diff. I just couldn't live with it, even for just um, just driving it to the track and back. Um, on the track itself, the welded diff worked really well because um, the car was really predictable, and um, both the wheels were locked together always. So like, um, it was good. It felt it felt really predictable, and you could slide the tail if you wanted to, or like it felt like a go kart pretty much. But um, I'm pretty curious to see how the LSD would compare to this. Um, obviously driving around just on the regular streets, you can't really tell whether there's much of a difference. Other than the LSD is much more comfortable, you don't scrub the tires every time you take a turn. But um, yeah, I guess when I'll go back to the track, then I'll really find out how it compares. So that's it for this part. Uh, for the next part... I have turbos lying around and a whole bunch of parts that come along when you need to install turbos like wastegates, intercoolers and all that. But I'm not sure whether to get started on that because the first race is coming on May 28th and um, I'm not sure if I start everything whether I'm going to be done before that or not. Uh, so I still have to decide that. Um, but either way, you're, the next part is probably going to be preparing for the race, getting everything ready for that. Or maybe even do a track day before we head there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this part. And um, I guess you'll find out in the next part whatever I decide to do.